Welcome ladies and gentlemen to this, your Taurus February 2024 reading and forecast. Hi, I'm Nigel St. James Clairvoyant. Well this month we have an interesting deck, it's called Spolia. Now the artists or artists declared uh, some years ago that they were not going to do any further editions and so if you happen to come across one of these second hand get hold of it because they are going to become even more rare than they already are. It's only a limited run to start with I think but the artwork is really quite good and of course over the course of the last month I've done a number of one-on-one -on -one clairvoyant readings for people from different parts of the world over FaceTime and Skype. And if you might be interested in seeing what's involved in that, just have a look at the description box below. Now I've also done a number of healings as well. The spiritual gift of healing was provided to me on the basis that I get nothing in return for it. Readings I charge for, but healings are free. I am to get no payment, no benefit, and the healing is provided without obligation and nothing will be sold or recommended to you. So if you feel that you want a healing, just reach out. It is my spiritual duty to provide it. That's the basis upon which the gift was given to me at birth, probably before birth actually. And it's great to see the subscribers again. Thank you for welcoming me into your home. I love to see you each month. And you know that we don't have any advertisements breaking their way into this content and so you get to enjoy the experience of the reading uninterrupted. Now we only take five cards because we spend more than five seconds on each card so let's show me the magic. The moon. Let's see what else there is. Justice. Couple of quite dark looking cards there. Here we have the Four of Coins. This is what? The King of Wands. There's something from my brown here somewhere, shall we? Let's see what there is. Here is finally the Page of Wands. Very interesting. Well, as is our usual practice, come sit down here next to me. I'll bring the camera around so that you and I can have a really good close look at the imagery on these cards together while they speak to you and I and I'll do the reading for you. Okay, a couple of major arcana on top of this spread. So let's have a look at the moon card first. And you can see the moon here, of course. And there is a goddess that's in the middle of the card there. Now, I would say that that comes from Greek mythology and the goddess is Hecate. She's the goddess of transitions and initiations, but also of confusion and darkness and of the subconscious. She's also the goddess of ritual and magic, incidentally. Now, I think that this is a sort of a wistful card for you and it indicates a journey of some kind, or although maybe it's one that has to be made at night, if you know what I mean, without the perfect illumination of your consciousness. It's almost as if you're wandering around out of your depths and under the sway of your animal nature, trying to crawl toward the light of certainty. Now Hecate, who was friends with Persephone, who I'm sure you've heard of, Hecate was one of the few gods or goddesses that was allowed to go down into the underworld and then come back out whenever she wanted to. And this underworld, I think that this has a great meaning for you at this time. Now the astrological energy coming around this card here and coming from it is that of Neptune in Pisces with Venus exalted. And the question that you really want to ask yourself at this time is, is what is happening or being said to me real or is it actually an illusion? You see, Pisces is very much associated with the subconscious, with emotions, with intuition, and also with astrology, incidentally. And 
Actually, this is the last of the major arcana that I associate with uh, one of the classical planets uh, and the new planets for that matter, because Neptune, which I see here, well, its watery depths are associated with dreams, with visions and the imagination. And I think that links it in quite well with the qualities of the moon, doesn't it? It's almost as if there is a final testing for you at this time the burning off of karma. There's a struggle within the subconscious and you may be coming to new levels of consciousness. It's possible that at this time there may be some mental confusion. That's that illusory nature of a situation that's there, which results in a lack of clarity. Now, it could be that someone is trying to deceive you Ah, this energy here really represents the gateway to the unknown. It brings you to new and unfamiliar ground. And there, I think there could be some fears and demons that you've carried with you that pop up. But of course, they are not real. Now, when this moon is calling you to enter into the underworld, into the darkness, feelings and emotions can come out of nowhere. So trust your inner divine light. The moon reminds you to go forward without worrying about all the what ifs. Worry never eventuates. Trust your authentic self and fight off those monsters. Light is always brighter than darkness, and the moon's guiding light says, follow me. Use your inner strength and focus. Trust your intuition and instincts, and you are going to wake up on the other side of the threshold liberated. Now, I see that the number of the card here is number 18. Well, that is the number of a challenge, of tests, of initiation, of intuition, inner strength, and also of completion. Now, I think that what is going to happen here is that this energy is going to inspire you on your way to new ideas and new pathways. Now, though it doesn't, I think, real, reveal necessarily the total situation to you, it teaches you to tap into your intuition and trust it. It opens information and inherent memories through dreams. Pay attention to your dreams. It reflects where you are on your cycle of life, I think, and how you feel about it. It reminds you that the cycles in life and your spiritual path are always beginning and rebirthing. The moon reminds you that you will pass through the threshold many times and on many levels and each time you will heal yourself and you'll have the awareness that you have become more expanded and your wisdom becomes deeper. The moon, of course, reflects the sun. You reflect the divine. You have heard the call of the unknown. You are on the threshold of new experience. So pay attention now to the voice of your heart and scrutinize calmly and carefully any offers of assistance and guidance that you may receive. And ask yourself these questions. What inner regions feel strange or alien, unknown to you? Where are your blind spots? What experiences are you most afraid of? Call them by name. Don't be afraid of things. Don't be afraid of the darkness of the underground. You've seen it before. And say this to yourself. I enjoy making important decisions. I value honestly, uh, honesty and, and uh, integrity in relations. I like what is mysterious within me and within others, and I express myself fully and openly like the moon itself, where it is responsible to do so. Now, through choice, I can change my experience, and I know that it is always darkest just before the dawn. 
Now next on that top line there was this card of Justice. Oh, isn't that interesting? I say it's interesting because well, there are no human faces in there, although there are a couple of hands there. It's almost as if the humanity has been taken out of it. And I think that this suggests a very objective, non-subjective approach to the issue of justice. Justice is about what is right, not what is fair. What is fair is always a matter of opinion. Now, this is Venus ruling Libra with Saturn exalted. Now I think that this is a time of you balancing opposites here. Now you will be getting justice, that is you will be getting what is just for you to have and there is a balancing going on. I think as a result of this moon card in your in your mind between your conscious and subconscious self, maybe even a putting off of action until you have determined whether something is an illusion or not. There's an objectivity here to you, a standing back, the balancing of opposites and centering yourself. Yes, I say centering yourself because really here, this is about keeping your inner balance centered as you live your life in the chaos of the world. Justice is coming through here, this energy to encourage you to look deep inside yourself and identify any contradictions that are inside of you and which are throwing you off balance. Balancing your intuitive self also with your spiritual values and with the conscious mind and moral values brings you an inner strength and a clarity to make just decisions. Now the number here is 11. Now that's actually a master number in numerology and it is the number of vision, new consciousness, balance, heightened awareness, intuition and insight. Now, justice here, I think, is representing that the laws of nature, the moral law, even legal laws, and the laws of the universe are all combining now to work in your favor. It is reminding you that there is divine justice. The purpose of this energy here is to say that you should be fair and impartial while working towards truth, and it's also bringing answers to help you make a decision, I think. It's asking you to weigh carefully any, any matters that are before you, any important choices that are going to affect you and others. Now, when this energy arrives, as it has done in this position here, it's bringing a choice or a decision that needs to be made. Justice is softly speaking to you and saying, don't be impetuous, step back, connect with your spiritual and moral values, quiet down your emotions, use your inner wisdom, choose what you know is right rather than what you want to be right. Do and be the best that you can. Be a vessel for divine light to shine through with the understanding of cosmic justice rather than ego justice. I think justice can bring about here legal matters, financial contracts. Review everything very carefully, of course, and get appropriate professional advice if you're signing contracts or involved in law cases, of course. Cross all of your T's and dot your I's. This is a time of fairness, harmony, truth, honesty, reason, and balance for you, but there is a decision that's going to be made. So pay attention to what situations in your daily life tend to throw you off balance. Discover the conditions under which you find harmony again and carry this quality with you more and more as you move through your daily activities. Now, ask yourself this, 
What actually helps you reach your center and to stay there? And what happens when you lose your center? Say this to yourself. I am balanced and centered. I honor my word. I value being truthful even in difficult situations. The abundance and the beauty of nature, that is a reflection of my own nature. And I am at rest in my own center. Now we might have a look at that card that's in the center, which is the, which is the what? Uh, the Four of Pentacles. Now, what has this got to say? And particularly in the center there, now the first thing that I notice is this, is that look at all these right angles that are there. There's right angles and straight lines running everywhere. That seems to me to suggest that there's almost like a, a structure that you're being built. This is a very material card and maybe that you are in some respect scared of losing the material things that you have. Well, nothing wrong with that. Now, you're not going to lose them though, I might say. Now, the astrology is that of the sun in the third decan of Capricorn, the 13th to the 21st of January. Well, Capricorn is a very ambitious sign. It's good with money. It has a realistic, grounded approach to life. And the sun, energizes the Capricorn Earth, because Capricorn, like you, is an Earth sign. Capricorn is the cardinal sign of Earth. You, of course, are the fixed sign of Earth. Well, this Capricorn Earth is seeded and, and energized by the sun and benefits and power. They are the results for you. Now, the sun in astrology is the symbol of your dynamism or your power. And Capricorn in this situation here, I think is the putting of that power to use in a way that's going to be beneficial to you. So the strong foundations around you, a stability here. It might be, I'm just looking at these right angles and straight lines again something where you might be taking a tight rein on the budget and being financially cautious or saving for the future and protecting yourself in a way. But this is about making things happen. It's about manifestation. You know, one of the secrets to really being able to make use of this energy is to create a foundation that's built solidly with spiritual and emotional boundaries that then allows your mind to explore and to dream of what can be. As a result of that, you will discover your personal power to push forward on your true path and to let your imagination soar and explore, bringing you amazing new insights and inspiration. Now in this position here, it is unavoidable that this energy is bringing success, a stability and a security. A job or a goal has been completed. It presents a stable foundation to start putting new ideas into motion. It also speaks of a need to re-evaluate your present values and your goals. You might be holding on to something, you see, an idea, a person, a relationship, a situation, a possession, or a job that is outworn and needs to be let go. This represents spiritual expansion as well by understanding the difference between your outer wealth and your inner wealth. It brings opportunity to take a bit of a rest if you need to, to discover your personal power here and bringing energy to shift and transform the old into the new. But there's also the requirement here, I think, for, and again, I'm drawn to these very stark lines that are here, is to say that, is your life, your behavior, stark and rigid like these right angles and vertical lines? 
Or does your life or your behavior need more order, structure, and solidity? I think there's the opportunity here for you to increase your assets as a result of sound judgment and wise. You are willing to work for what you want and you'll have confidence in applying yourself to the world. And this is also speaking of the fulfillment of your personal goals and dreams. Now study the different aspects of power. There is a book, you'll find it on the internet, by an Italian guy, I think it was written in the 15 or 1600s, called Machiavelli, The Prince. And that's a great, a great summary of the laws of power. But say this also to yourself. I offer my power in the service of love. Now there's a couple of court cards down here and here we go. Let's have a look at this one first. Okay, the page. Page of Wands. A lot of fire, obviously, in the painting there. The suit of wands being fire, as you would know. What can I take from it? Well, the first thing that I'm getting up here is a lot of Leo, a lot of Virgo, and a lot of Cancer. They are going to be important to you. This is also saying that I think that you are going to be someone who has a great passion, a very wide-ranging passion for a wide ranging circumstances, situations, people, a passion of whatever kind. And you could almost most be entirely reckless in the means of obtaining the gratification. In fact, it's almost as if you are going to be insatiable. Now you are going to be energetic, very individualistic, brilliant and daring and expressive in love or in anger. Certainly you'll be very enthusiastic. I will say this about it too, is we were talking about some demons and monsters that might be in your subconscious that were raised potentially by that moon card. But now is a time when you are going to be freed from fear, freed from fear. It's a new beginning. There's optimism now and increased perception. Your old fears have lost their power over you and their dead remains cannot frighten you any longer. So think about your greatest strengths. Play to your strengths. Minimize your weaknesses. I think you'll be a person who is confident, daring, exciting. Maybe something of a non-conformist, actually. Very freedom-loving and certainly very ambitious. That was also highlighted by that card that's there. I think people are going to love your character and your energy. Now, you could be vengeful and temperamental sometimes, unruly, and oh, I know this wouldn't be you, but I am getting a feeling here of maybe someone out there who is shallow or, or cruel, but definitely the conquering of old fears and patterns of thought. You've brought them to the surface, I think, through that moon card that's there and through the adjustments that you've made as a result of just this adjustment, uh, uh, this justice card here. And, but I think it's the case that you've often learned lessons the hard way, haven't you? So what is the next step in your life? Find it fearlessly. Learn about ways of transforming fearful feelings. Write them down, look at them, name them. It's like a ball. If you can see a ball, you know how to catch it. Why? Because you understand what a ball is and say to yourself, my greatest strength is, fill in the blank, and say this also to yourself, as I accept my fear, it is transformed into love. But that energy keeps flying along for you because here we have the, the, if I'm not mistaken, it was the, yeah, the king of wands. Let's have a look at you, King. 
see what you have to say there on your very fiery throne there. Actually, I'm getting interesting here. I almost see like the tail of a lion, the beak of a Scorpio, which is a scorpion, the face of a man for Aquarius. I don't see any wart. And, uh, and there's a horned leg for, well, a, hooven, a, a cloven hoof of uh, Taurus that's there for Earth. Now, Sagittarius and Scorpio are all over this card for you. This is a time when you'll be very active, generous, quite impetuous, perhaps. You'll have a great pride and a swiftness that is going to be quite unpredictable to other people, really. You might also find that around you, things are, uh, are, are running out of, um, what can I say, that there is a, there's an unusual aspect to the elements of life around you. Well, what you should do is uh, be cool, be collected, be resolute and energetic and be careful of the actions that you take. Not doing anything that hasn't been well thought out, but go forward with an alert confidence in your ability that's here. There's a lot of dynamic forward motion for you, increased insight, there's coming changes. You will be, again, that's coming through, ambitious, quite adventurous, determined, very charming. And you'll have a magnetism that's very hard to resist. And whether you like it or not, people are going to find you very sexually attractive, so do with that what you want. But you will be making things happen here with this fire energy that's there before you, shooting an arrow. Sagittarius is around here. It's as if you've got, you're taking one shot at something, you've got all the breeze behind you, but with one arrow only in your quiver, make sure that there is a plan B that you have in mind as well. Others are saying to find your vitality, trust your gut instincts, let your hair down, give yourself a pep talk and believe that you can do it. Be awake and ready for people or situations that can produce dynamic changes in your consciousness and in your lifestyle. And be grateful for this gift from existence. Seek out situations and opportunities that challenge you and engage them with all of your energy and say this, Every challenge which arises helps me grow. Every storm strengthens my roots. Well, what a great set of cards for you. And didn't you do a good job? Well, I told you that the art on these cards was very interesting, didn't I? And very rare, it seems, today. And I hope you enjoyed that reading as much as I enjoyed giving it to you, which I certainly did. It's great to see you and thank you. Now, the only favor that I'd ask if you have made it this far is would you do me the favor of pressing the like button on the way out? That's good for the YouTube computer, as you would understand and allows people to come and see these readings. Now, of course, unless I see you privately, then the next time I see you will be next month. And so remember that, until then, that you are a legend. And I look forward to seeing you again next month. And until then, it's bye for now.